percent composition is our next video and it's about the easiest part of this particular chapter when it comes to the matching section in particular because all we're really doing is taking piece divided by the whole this is ideas that we've seen for several chapters now we saw it uh, with a lot of definite composition problems in our last homework but this idea that you can take the piece divided by the whole and times it by 100 is something we've seen for a long time now. We just have to realize that the piece is probably the solute. In most cases, that's what we're after. The whole is the solution, and the solution is both the solute and the solvent. A common mistake, though, is students put solute divided by solvent, and that's nothing other than a ratio. So you have to include both pieces as part of the whole. If you don't, you're going to make an easy mistake. So a lot of times this is going to be salt, and this is going to be water. And if you don't include the salt and the water on the bottom, you're not going to get a percentage. You're going to get a ratio, and that's not what they're after. So these kinds of problems, you can do grams and grams, volume and volume, or grams and volume. But notice they're very quick. If you take 10 grams of sugar and you put it into 100 grams of solution, times that by 100, you get 10%. Not meant to be a difficult problem at all, and this is why hospitals use IV bags with percentages. That's if you run out, it's pretty easy to make. You can know exactly how many grams can make a solution. So what these numbers really mean when it comes down to it is if you have 10 grams of sugar that means the solution was 10 grams of sugar plus 90 grams of water and that makes 100 grams of solution. The problem is some questions in the homework and in a few that make it to the test they may only say water. If that's the case, we're going to have to add both of those together. So imagine if this problem said 100 grams of water instead of 100 grams of solution. If that were the case, then you'd have to take 10 divided by 100 grams of water plus the 10 grams of sugar and then times it by 100. So notice we have both pieces, water and sugar, added together. So be mindful of that. If they say water, you're going to have to add those two up underneath in order to get a percentage. If it says solution, you're fine to just take little number divided by big number times it by 100 and be done very quickly like the matching section is going to ask you to do. So this was grams to grams. You can do the exact same thing with milliliters and milliliters. So here you have milliliters of liquid. So milliliters of the solute, ethanol. You have milliliters of the solution. So you can just take 25 divided by 100 times 100 uh, and very quickly get that answer of 25%. Not meant to be difficult. Just remember, though, that if this said water, that's completely different. If it says water, then you'd have to say, well, then it's 25 grams of ethanol, or in this case, milliliters of ethanol, divided by... 100 mils of water plus the 25 mils of ethanol to give us that total volume of the solution. So again, this being water, this being ethanol, together, that makes the solution. And then you'll times that by 100. So just be mindful that if it says water, the problem is going to take a little bit more brain juice than just taking little divided by big times 100 but you're going to have most of them be uh, little divided by big times 100. But there are a handful that might say water and such, so just be aware of that. So I'm not too worried about percentage problems. Those are going to be almost gimme kinds of questions on the homework and the exam. Molarity, however, is not. Molarity is going to have conversions using moles, and we're just adding one more piece to our puzzle. So if we kind of summarize real quick our definitions as we move forward, we have 
one mole is Avogadro's number, and that's usually atoms or molecules or formula units. Not used very often whatsoever. Still not used very often whatsoever in this chapter. We do have one mole is grams from the periodic table. That one's used quite a bit still, and it was used a lot in our last chapter. We have mole to mole ratios. Those can either come from coefficients or they can come from subscripts. Subscripts pretty rare, still is. And then now we have capital M, which is moles per thousand milliliters or one liter. Again, thousand milliliters is going to be more common for entrochem purposes. So this is just a conversion. These are conversions. And we really, we just added one more. So there's still moles in every conversion. And that's no change from last week. So let's warm up with a quick molarity problem, and then we'll do a more intense one. Here we have moles of calcium fluoride at 25 mils. So again, we have two numbers. Or do we? We have a number, and then we have a conversion of moles to liters. Or it could just as well be moles to 1,000 milliliters if we want to cheat and do the metric conversion at the same time. This is definitely the one we're going to use because we're already in milliliters and it uses milliliters. So put that number out front as we've been doing, 25 milliliters, cancel, milliliters. Because we used 1,000 milliliters to represent a liter, we can use capital M up here for moles. And that one happens to be 0 0.350. And then we'll get moles, and that's exactly what they want, moles. And that's how much we're left over as moles. So again, that was pretty similar to what we just did earlier. Uh, again, here they use liters to cancel. Um, notice they've already converted to liters. There's a thousand milliliters into a liter, so all they really did was move back one, two, three spaces. And that's where we ended up with uh, liters there. We avoided that by using a thousand milliliters instead of doing what they did. You can imagine we can do the exact same thing in reverse. If we had moles, we would cancel moles instead. So if we have 0 0.00875 moles, we would just get rid of moles by putting it on the bottom. No different than the last two weeks. We could use volume here of 1,000 milliliters and then use capital M of 0 0.350. So here's just capital M flipped upside down. Milliliters are left over. Milliliters will equal milliliters. And we get our answer of 25 back. So again, they had it in liters, so I had to convert. And that's by moving it back to the right uh, three spaces. So one, two, three. It gives us your 25. Let's try one of the tougher problems of this chapter, and that's going to be with balanced chemical equations. So this is like our titration lab of vinegar. You're going to have a balanced chemical equation, oftentimes with acids and bases, because both of those are usually solutions. So you'll have to write an equation first, and then calculate grams from milliliters, or milliliters to milliliters, depending on the circumstances they're in. One thing we should know for certain is as soon as we see a balanced chemical equation, we should think three conversions. This is where it really pays off to know that skeleton from earlier. If we have moles on top, top and bottom, and on bottom, it's just like last week. What changes is now we're probably going to use milliliters of A, a thousand milliliters of A, solution anyway. This will be A, this will be A, because those will cancel. Just remember that when we use milliliters of A and moles of A, that's going to be capital M for A. 
And then as we look for B, it's either going to be in grams or milliliters. Let's just pretend it's going to be in milliliters. If this is milliliters of B, this would now be milliliters of B solution. So that's going to be 1,000 again. This will be capital M for the B bottle. And this will be B and B in order to cancel. So these are going to come from the balanced chemical equation. So this is going to be coefficients. And this last section is going to be, again, capital M. So the only difference between this and last week is we used periodic table grams before and after, first and third. Now we're going to be using capital M, first and third, typically. So in this problem, we have lots of numbers. And that's because it's two problems wrapped up into one that's not going to happen in the homework, uh, I don't think, ever. But this is the notes, and I want you to practice. So we're basically saying we have, we need 9.70 grams of lead chloride. We have two bottles. We have a bottle of calcium chloride and of lead nitrate. So let's put this lead nitrate first. Lead nitrate's bottle says 0 0.100. And we have another bottle of calcium chloride, and it's twice as strong at 0 0.200. You mix those two together, you get some spectator ions, which in this case is calcium and nitrates. We're not worried about those, but we are getting some lead chloride. And they want 9.70 grams of it. So really what they're asking for here then is how much, that's stoichiometry, of these bottles do we need in order to get there? We need a balanced chemical equation. That's really what we have here. Luckily, calcium and lead have plus two charges, so they have the same number of ions before and after. So this is just a one to one to one to one reaction. This happens to be a precipitate that we can recognize from the solubility table from exam four. Not important for this chapter. These are spectator ions are going to be aqueous and be filtered away, just like we did with aspirin. So notice in the situation, we really only have one number. And then we have two conversions. So this is the number that goes out front and first always. It's the measurement. The other ones are conversions. Capital M is a conversion, not a measurement. It's a concentration. It's a way to get from one unit to another. So knowing that our equation is 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, let's clear this out. So again, 1, let me switch markers. We have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. Let's use our 9.70 grams of lead chloride. Let's do our three conversions. And then we'll do another one just like it. for the second bottle. Let's go ahead and put moles on top, top and bottom, and on bottom. Moles on top, top and bottom, and on bottom, just like last week. Very similar to last week, we have grams of lead chloride, and we're going to get rid of them. Grams of lead chloride. Grams of lead chloride. That's per one mole on the periodic table, and that's lead chloride. Lead chloride. It's going to cancel with lead chloride. It's going to cancel with lead chloride. So nothing different there from what we did last uh, week. Here we're going to look at different solutions. This will be milliliters of one solution. This will be milliliters of the other solution. So it doesn't matter which one first. We can do milliliters of lead nitrate. We can do milliliters of calcium chloride. So this will be calcium chloride, calcium chloride, calcium chloride cancels. This will be lead nitrate, squishing everything in, unfortunately. Nitrate, lead nitrate, they cancel. So definition-wise, we go to the periodic table. We find the periodic table here, which would be Pb plus Cl plus Cl. 
Same thing here. Find the periodic table grams, that's PB plus CL plus CL, so that's about 35.45 twice. And lead's around 207.2 once. Based on our equation of lead nitrate to lead chloride, that was one lead chloride to one lead nitrate. Then we have one calcium chloride to one lead chloride as well. If we assume 1,000 milliliters, we can use capital M from those bottles. For the lead nitrate bottle, that was a 0 0.100. It was twice as concentrated in the calcium core, that's 0 0.200. And then we throw that in our calculator. So we take 9.7 divided by that periodic table weight, times it by 1,000 divided by 0 0.1, and do the exact same thing for calcium chloride. So we have our balanced chemical equation. Check, it's a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one lead chloride um, being the precipitate. Notice this is our first conversion. Here we have the first conversion for both problems that we did. That's lead chloride canceling with this PB plus CL plus CL. You get moles. Notice in the next conversion, they're going to cancel moles. So now moles are canceling. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. So those are the coefficients. Notice we have the same amount of moles because we have the same problem basically at this point because they're both one-to-one. -one. And then here we have moles to 1,000 milliliters in our third and final conversion. And it tells us we need about 350 to 175. Notice this is about two times 175. And that should make sense because you're going to need two times the amount of lead nitrate as you do calcium chloride because it's two times stronger. So you only need 175 mils of it because it's two times stronger than our 0.1 solution where we needed 200, you know, 349 in that case mils of it. So because that bottle is two times stronger, we're going to need half as much of it to equal lead nitrate in the end. So the hope is that when you mix those two volumes together, you're going to get 9.70 grams of lead chloride. You should. But as we saw with aspirin from the molarity chapter, or from the, at least the mole chapter that we just covered, um, that's not always the case. You're going to lose some by filtering it, by leaving it in the flask, or by spilling some on the balance and so forth. But theoretically, you get 9.70 grams, and then you can see what you actually get from the balance later. So in our last video, we'll come back and we'll talk briefly about colligative properties and soap. Catch you then.